develops slightly ahead of upper extremity tone, and distal passive flexion precedes proximal passive flexion. There are three possible methods of assessing flexor tone in the neonate. The first is extensor stretch or passive flexion, which may better be described as flexibility and is used to evaluate the degree to which a limb can be flexed at the joint by the examiner. This maneuver requires little or no tone on the part of the infant. We may here be looking at mobility, flexibility, or resistance to extensor stretch rather than at passive flexor tone. The second method of assessing passive flexor tone is resistance to passive extension. These maneuvers require that the untested portion of the extremity be resting quietly on a supporting surface, that the examiner be sensitive to the infant's slight tendency to resist extension, and that the examiner supports the thigh from the side and avoids placing pressure on the flexors being tested so that there is no interference with their function. The third method of testing passive flexor tone is by measuring the angles of recoil to a previously flexed position. This maneuver requires that the examiner presets the extremity to a flexed position and avoids fatiguing the flexors by maintaining the extremity in the extended position for too long a time. This new assessment addresses infants whose gestation may range from 20 to 44 weeks. In performing the assessment, we usually begin with the neuromuscular maturity. Please refer to the score sheet in your monograph. The first criterion is posture. Posture reflects body muscle tone at rest. As maturation progresses, the fetus gradually assumes increasing passive flexor tone which proceeds in a centripetal direction with lower extremities slightly ahead of upper extremities. For example, very early in gestation, only the ankles may be flexed. Knees will flex as wrists just begin to flex. Hip flexion, then abduction are just ahead of elbow, then shoulder girdle flexion. In short, the preterm infant exhibits primarily unopposed passive extensor tone, while the infant approaching term shows progressively less opposed passive flexor tone. To observe posture, the infant is placed supine, and the examiner waits until the infant settles into a relaxed or preferred position. If the infant is found supine, gentle manipulation of the extremities will allow the infant to seek the baseline position of comfort. Hip adduction, accompanying flexion, is depicted by the acute angle at the hips in posture square number four. The figure is selected which most closely depicts the infant's preferred posture. The square window assesses wrist flexibility and or resistance to extensor stretch. These are responsible for the resulting angle of the flexion at the wrist. The examiner straightens the infant's fingers and applies gentle pressure on the dorsum of the hand. The resulting angle between the palm of the infant's hand and the forearm is estimated at greater than 90, 90, 60, 45, 30, or 0 degrees. The appropriate square on the score sheet is then selected. The arm recoil maneuver focuses on passive flexor tone of the biceps muscle by measuring the angle of recoil following brief extension of the upper extremity. With the infant lying supine, the examiner places one hand beneath the infant's elbow for support. Taking the infant's hand, the examiner briefly sets the elbow in flexion, then momentarily extends the arm before releasing the hand. 
the angle of recoil to which the forearm springs back into flexion is noted and the appropriate square is selected. Square number four is selected only if there is contact between the infant's fist and face. Care must be taken not to hold the arm in the extended position for a prolonged period as this causes flexor fatigue and results in a falsely low score due to poor flexor recoil. The popliteal angle maneuver assesses maturation of passive flexor tone about the knee joint by testing for resistance to extension of the lower extremity. With the infant lying supine and with diaper removed, the thigh is placed on the infant's abdomen with the knee fully flexed. After the infant has relaxed